It's the internet. You're busy. Let's do this for November 10th, 2022. For the next hour or so, let me help you sort through the world of game of gaming on Game Mess Mornings Live with me, Jeff Grubb. Today, the official Mario account on Twitter just told me to burn my house down. But first, please join me in welcoming today's co-host, the Game Mess Mornings. It's Merritt K. Merritt, how are you doing? Good. I'm hyped for Ricochet 2. Yes, I mean, absolutely. I we've all been waiting for it. It's finally I've, here. I've told my family they're all very mm -hmm. excited. Uh, this is what we've all been waiting for. It's it's finally here. Uh, that thing's more of a mess every second. Um, just this, like, really just a couple something. minutes ago, like uh, the chief information security officer and a bunch of other people who are like in charge of compliance all just resigned from Twitter. So, a uh, huh. bunch of fun stuff happening over there. What do you think the over under is on him selling oh, it? God. I mean, he's got to right. Like, yeah. It's it, no like, way. Eighteen months from now, he still owns Twitter. Oh no, no, way. no, no. I mean, it's either a bankruptcy play or, it, like, I just wasn't thought out. I don't think I, yeah, people are like, out. "Oh, Elon's a smart guy. He's doing this, all this stuff." No, I think yeah. it was like he's just ruled by his id, and yes. he's rich enough that that looks like buying a forty-four billion dollar website. Yes. In the same way that I would go on, that I started playing Magic: The Gathering Arena and was like, "I can buy some packs. That's totally fine." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it, it's different. I mean, it is uh, insufferable to have to watch him fail in front of us, but he's clearly just flailing and failing it's, in every way. And yeah, it's yeah, uh, it's it, rough. It's it's a mess. I, yeah, I think. In, by this time next year, uh, the, the talks will have moved on to him selling it to someone else. Um, he'll be like, I fixed it, now I'm getting out. And uh, and we'll see if that number gets disclosed for how much he actually ends up selling it for. It's not going to be $44 billion, though. Uh, all right, uh, well, let's get into this mess. Before we do so, let's explain what we do here. Most weekdays, I, Jeff Grubb, will help piece your gaming life back together. That includes breaking news and maybe even some of our own original porting. For all these topics, I'll get the input of a bona fide expert who will make me look smart if you're watching live on Twitch, welcome. Hello, Twitch. You can always listen to the show later on podcast feeds by searching for Game Mess Mornings or find the RSS on GiantBomb.com. You can also catch the show later with chapters and timestamps on YouTube. Hello, YouTube, and hello to all the podcast listeners out there on Spotify and elsewhere. Okay, we have a lot to get into, so let's start the morning mess with... Merritt, you have a book coming out. Yeah. Oh, my God. Finally. I, I, yeah, finally. So... I, you've told me about this book before. I'm very excited about it. Um, you, you've shared some images from it. it. Basically, let's explain the concept. Tell people what the yeah. book is. Right. So it is a coffee table book, a, a photo book of land party photos, primarily from the 90s and 2000s. Some newer ones, but mostly like Y2K era mm -hmm. of stuff. Yeah. Um, and it started kind of as just like sort of a joke tweet it's that I made like over a year ago where I was like, I would love a coffee table book of this stuff. Cause you search online and there's so many photos that are just like, like Renaissance spreads. Yes. Of just like bottles of like balls. Uh, Golden Garana. ratio. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Just all kinds of stuff like that. And, um, that tweet did really well. And so I was like, okay, well maybe other people actually want this too. And I'm not just weird. And, um, I ended up talking to a publisher, um, to read only memory, um, who, put out just like incredible beautiful yes. uh game books and um they they were into it and we finally launched um on their they have a crowdfunding platform called volume um that's basically just pre-orders like the book is is pretty much done i had there is room for more photos i will say that so if you have photos of this era that you'd like to send in please dm me um and we can talk about that but but yeah it's basically just a pre-order for the book and um you know it's I've gotten photos from from the U.S., from Europe, uh, from South America, just like from you know a bunch of places around the world, and it's just kind of wild to like revisit this era. Yes. Um, before broadband was like really everywhere, um, everywhere, but like before it was like super common in the U.S. Um, and it's kind of ironic that right as as um, you know computers started getting smaller and more portable. And we didn't have big CRTs anymore, and we had, you know, gaming laptops. That LAN parties kind of like died down because broadband became a thing. And it was like, well, why am I going to bring my stuff over to my buddy's yep. place if I can just play Counter Strike online? Um, but it really is like just such an era, and um, the like. You've got you see the aesthetics, you see it just weird things like home decor too, because a lot of this right. stuff is happening in like you know parents' living rooms or like basements and stuff. Um, I so think it's really, like it's real... really the images you've shown so far uh, and shared and, uh, you know, of course, seeing these things online for a long time. It's really transportive about just, oh, it really puts you in a place. The 
the beige boxes, the drinks they're holding, God, and yeah. then you start, you, you, obviously you're first drawn to the people, but then you're right, you look in the background and th these are just people's homes, and it's just like, the way they move things off to the side, I don't know, it's, right. just, it, it tells such a story, all of these images, I really do dig this stuff. Um, you said you were looking for submissions, is there... And yeah. you, I think I asked this last time, but like since then, is there anything in particular that you're that you're looking for, like from people? Like, is um, there anything that you're like, man, I wish we had this? <laughs> right. Uh, I mean, I would love more submissions from outside the U.S. Uh, right. I, you know, there are like versions of land parties that kind of happen around the world. They sort of look different in different places. So in places like Japan, where internet um, structures were totally different. Um, you know, maybe, or like in parts of Asia, internet cafes were bigger than land parties. Um, but I think things like this kind of happened around the world. And so if you have photos from, you know, from Europe or from South America or from Africa or like whatever, um, I would love to see those. And um, yeah, otherwise it's just sort of a matter of like just sifting through stuff. Cause like a lot of people just have nothing or they have maybe like one or two photos um, because again, like, you know, smartphones weren't a thing. People, some people had digital cameras, but it was basically right. just, you know, if you had that and you happened to bring it. Um, and then some people will just be like, here's, I've documented like my 10 years of land parties and here's like 2000. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. I'm just going to make an evening of this and just kind of yep. go through these. Um, but, um, but yeah, I know like, please don't be shy. If you have stuff, uh, definitely let me know. And also like, there's going to be a few, uh, little stories in the book as well. So if you have an interesting story that, you know, happened at a land party, it doesn't have to be, you know, like super, super interesting or exciting, just like something kind of fun that happened. Uh, then let me know about that as well. And maybe um, that'll go in there. But um, yeah, it's been kind of a long time in the making and I'm, I'm really excited about it. I, I, I am too. It's exactly my kind of thing. I was uh, just recently contributed to uh, that, uh, the, the guide to handhelds and it was fun doing that stuff and just oh, seeing yeah. all the pictures put together for that. And I'm like, man, I, I'm into coffee table books these days. And this is definitely one to, uh, vibing with me. Uh, how can people pre-order again? Like, I think, I think you might've mentioned it, but let's just remind people. Yeah. It's, um, so it's the URL is vol.co slash product slash land dash party. And I'm sure I could get a, you know, a short <laughs> for that. But, uh, if you go on my Twitter, it's like the pins, there we go. Uh, the pins tweet. So you can just, that's probably the easiest way to do it. All right. Well, yeah, let's, if, if someone wants to share Mer Merit's Twitter and chat or anything like that, feel free to do that. Excellent. Okay. Let's, uh, we'll, we'll get on to the, uh, on with the news. And I see some people in chat already mentioning that they, uh, are, are going to go look for some pictures. Uh, Octo in oh, Romania yeah. is going to go see if he can scrounge oh, something yes. up. That's sounds fantastic. Thank you. All right, let's uh, let's start here um, with the uh, Nintendo Indie World Showcase from yesterday. Uh, delayed Switch exclusive sports story will be released in December. Uh, I got pretty excited seeing this um, sports story. The sequel to 27, uh, 2017 Switch exclusive golf story has been given a December release. Let me uh, mute that real quick. Uh, and so it's coming next month. We haven't heard about this game much in the last year, about a year ago, I think, if I'm remembering correctly. They talked about how it's it's still coming. We'll talk about we'll talk about it when we're ready. Well, they're ready, and of course, you know, if you get a chance to put something in a, a, a Nintendo Direct style thing, you're going to take that, especially if you're an indie team. Golf Story was super successful on the Switch, so much so that I guess the team never felt the urge or need to port it to other stuff because it's still just on Switch. There's God, I, like, I didn't realize that. That's why. Yeah, I, I was, like, was looking it up yesterday. I'm like, well, let me go look on Steam. It's not on Steam, and that is very strange. I can't imagine Nintendo would have had some exclusivity deal that, that Nintendo just doesn't do that, especially no, for indie yeah. games. So it's it's strange. But like, where where's your like history with Golf Story? Are you excited about Sports Story? Um. So I actually never played it, but um, I always liked the old Camelot uh, Game Boy Color Mario sports games. Yes. And to me, this seems like it was kind of like inspired by those. That's exactly like what it's going for. Them. Yes. Right. Um, so I always had kind of like looked at it and be like, hmm. So maybe like now I'm just going to like download it right after this and play it before it's, next month. It's really, it's, it's really charming. It's really fantastic. Yeah. It's really well done. It was a good early Switch game, but I think it's also held up as I've gone back to, to replay it a couple of times. If it's... You know, it's got a nice casual vibes to it where you could just relax with it. And then um, yeah, it, it's yeah. fun golf adventures. Um, so, yeah, that that's coming out uh, next month. But there was uh, other interesting games uh, announced. I, I put together, together a little list of stuff that, like, mm -hmm. stuck out to me. Uh, that includes Rogue Legacy 2 from Cellar Door Games, A Little to the Left, uh, which is that, that organization game that actually just came I out to PC. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like, I've been wanting to play that. 
Well, now it looks now, pretty cool. Yes, it does. Yeah. Now it's on Switch. Uh, Blanc, which has a really good art style. It's like a deer and a, another animal. can't remember. It, like a really striking, contrasty art style. Um, Once Upon a Jester, which is like this storytelling adventure game where you play as a, a court gesture. Uh, Pepper Grinder, which just looks friggin' amazing. This is a, a Devolver Digital joint. It's, um, it looks like Drill Dozer. And it looks like, uh, you know, Steam World Dig or something like that. It just okay. looks so okay. cool. I, I'm like looking at the trailer again. I'm getting mesmerized. Just the idea of having that big drill on the, on, the, on the front of this girl character that could just, you know, zoom through the dirt. Like, yeah, that brings back Drill Dozer vibes. Oh, but it looks drill even Dozer, more, yeah. Yes, but it looks Oof. even more kinetic uh, than, than that. Uh, it definitely looks also like a Devolver game. Yeah, I know. This looks very cool. Yes. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited for that. Uh, did you get a chance to watch the, or this or see anything shared from the Nintendo Indie World Direct that stuck out to you? Uh, I missed this one, but I did hear that they're uh, putting inscription. Yes, they are. Uh, on the Switch, which is pretty cool. Yeah, uh, that uh, I, was... I love inscription. And I'm like, okay, no, more people getting to play that good thing. Right. Yeah, I believe that no it, i think it was one of my games of the, it was like my number two game of the year last yeah. year wilder myth i think was number one but inscription is just like just so well put together just yep. and i'm normally like a little bit i think once you've seen some of the things that those kinds of games do you, you're kind of like okay i get it like I, I see where this is going but it just did it so well that it was like just wow yeah if you haven't played inscription yet and you have a switch then definitely pick it up when it's on there uh, Catipus in chat in uh, Twitch chat reminded me of the game that I was actually trying to put my finger on and couldn't remember. Pepper Grinder reminds me of the sand sections in Ori, and that is very much what it is. Oh, when Ori would go through the sands okay, yeah. and, and then burst out, I'm like, there's oh. like some stuff like that in um in Sonic Colors as well. Yeah. The, the digging right. wisp and God, I'm still not over how bad that part was. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's right. Uh, well, listen, we got Pepper Grinder coming instead. We'll just we'll rely on that. Um, but yeah, I, I thought the Indie World Showcase was. Pretty, pretty good, uh, it, you know, especially ending with with sports story, a game I've been waiting for for a long time, and then having the good news of it's only a month away, and then people uh, can go play Rogue Legacy 2 right now. That was the shadow drop, mm. I think, and I'm like, yeah, again, just more people getting a chance to play these games. I'm at a point, Merritt, where Steam Deck is has become my main platform for a lot sense. of handheld yeah. gaming, and that is, you know... The OLED screen on the Switch is great. If I had the choice and everything's right in front of me and I had to pick one or the other and both games run equally as fine on either platform, I probably would choose the Switch a lot of the time because of the OLED right. screen. Uh, but that's just yeah. not how it's working. The game, I'm, I'm already yeah. playing the Steam Deck. I'm just going to keep yep. playing the Steam Deck. Yep. So yep. Uh, I, I, that all that said, though, I think uh, Nintendo's still going to sell a lot of indie games. Indie games continue to sell best on Switch. Uh, that yeah. audience is very welcoming to those kinds of games. And uh, I, I think that they're going to, you know, I think all these games are going to have a real good chance of su at success on the platform. Uh, all right, let's uh, keep it in Nintendo news. Miyamoto acknowledges it's easier than ever to offer backward compatibility. This comes from Chris Scullion at VGC. Nintendo director Shigeru Miyamoto has acknowledged it's easier than ever to offer backward compatibility, but offered a non-committal response when asked about plans for the next Nintendo console. Uh, he, 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 here's the quote. He says, in the past, we provided a service known as Virtual Console that allowed users to play older games on new consoles with new hardware. As long as the hardware remained unchanged, those games would continue to be played. However, the publishing rights to video games are complicated, and we have said that we would only add titles after securing those necessary rights. Of course, video games developed for dedicated consoles were created in different development environments. He, go, he goes on to say, like, yeah, those environments changed. Recently, however, the, the development environment has increasingly become more standardized, and we now have an environment that allows players to enjoy older video games on newer consoles more easily than ever before. Uh, he also he concluded by saying, uh, Nintendo's strength is in, well, he's basically saying, however, Nintendo's strength is in creating new video game experiences, so when we release new hardware in the future, we would like to showcase unique video games that could not be created with pre-existing hardware. Okay, that, that, that makes sense. I... There's there's some question about the you know upcoming switch and what the the um the breadth of the backward compatibility will be. I think uh, it's the stance of most people that it needs to be robust, right? It needs to like I just bought many of these games digitally on my switch. We are well past the point where it's where it would be even a little bit acceptable for most of those yeah. games to not work, right? Yeah, no, that it would be unconscionable. <laughs> yes, and absurd. So, yes, exactly. So and now we get so we're you know going forward. I, it, it, that you know that's not to say it's going to be um easy uh you would think it would be easy it's a little bit easier on the other platforms because they are just continuing to use basically off-the-shelf computer hardware and the uh the switch using arm 
should still be pretty easy, but NVIDIA is making some uh, improvements to its systems on a chip that would actually make backward compatibility a little bit of a hassle. At least that's my understanding. I'm, I'm, I'm no expert, uh, but that's my understanding from people who are. Um, and so, but, you know, they're going to have to figure it out. And it does sound like he is suggesting that he is in meetings where they are figuring yeah. it out. And it's like, okay, it's standardized enough that, yes, expect backward compatibility. Uh, there's just very little chance that a Switch Pro, Switch 2 comes out and the digital library, all your games that you that you already own don't work, right? It would. Uh, I can't. I can't imagine seeing that headline. Yeah. Um, I mean, I can because it's Nintendo. <laughs> exactly. But, That's exactly what we're it's talking like, about. It. I feel like even they have to know at this point. Like you have a device, like the light, especially that is so like digital first. Yes. Like, obviously, you can still buy cartridges for mm -hmm. it, but like I think I maybe have half a dozen game cards mm -hmm. for the Switch. I just buy things digitally because it's so convenient and, and so easy. And um, yeah, to some extent, you know, that is like on the consumer for being like, okay, you know, I, I don't have the physical copy of this, but like there, they, they come on, like <laughs> that would, I feel like that would kill a hypothetical or like whatever the name is of the switch to, mm -hmm. to just say like, oh yeah, actually no, nah. like it would be one thing if it was just physical, but like once you get into like mainly digital environments, it's just, becomes like the value proposition for someone buying that is like well why would i do that until it has a robust library then like right and and it's um you know the uh, people want to make a lot of i i want to make a lot of comparisons to the steam deck uh because it yeah. is right there it's something i'm using a lot right. and i yeah. know that's not ever something that everybody is thinking about yet but the steam deck is successful it's growing fast yeah. and um it's gonna keep growing yeah yeah it's gonna keep growing but it's um also it, even if it's not something that people are who are going out and buying a switch for their family uh they're they're sure. not like oh the alternative is the steam deck they're probably not doing that i don't think they're doing that but yeah it's still very easy to be like well you know, the Steam Deck works this way, and all these digital games from the last 15, 20 years of PC all are at least available to try to work on there, and many of them are getting support, and if they, you know, if they do get, if they are verified, they will just work, and I own them, and I own them. Um, right. And then you put out, you can't, I mean, putting out a Switch compared to that, like, it's just the, the, the contrast these days uh, for Nintendo making a Nintendo-like move on that front would be very tough to pull off, and... and I just don't think they're going to be able to get away with it. And I think they they seem to know that. Even Miyamoto seems to know that, which is uh, right, maybe right. a little bit more surprising. And he, I think, in the past has kind of been like a sticking point on some of these issues. So yeah, like if yeah, he I think he just doesn't, board, he then... didn't care, right? Like, it seems like right. it's just like, yeah, no, yeah. it's more important than I get to do. Uh, I get We're to make new stuff. Yeah, yeah, new stuff, right. And he still says, oh, obviously that's important to him. And I, I believe yeah. him. But uh, I, well, I guess... That's the other question. Do you think this up, no, upcoming thing? We, we, we just, I'm just assuming Switch Pro, Switch right. Two. You get some weird new thing that I, would. Make I don't. It I don't know. I. I'm not sure. Like, it's hard to guess with that kind of thing. It but is. like, I don't really see Nintendo going like full. Like, we're doing a, a Wii or a Wii U again. Mm -hmm. Like that just seems like those the Wii U especially. I think they just got so scared off by that. Um. That. Yeah. I don't know. Like would they do any kinds of weird input devices or anything like maybe they're looking at the play date maybe they're thinking like okay this is something we can sort of borrow sorry my kiddo came home with a happy face she's been getting some sad faces at school and she wanted to show me so good, good job addy good job uh <laughs> uh yeah I, I i i agree and i think that um we will kind of um be hearing about this relatively soon obviously we're gonna get through the end of this year we're not gonna hear anything about yeah. what nintendo's doing next but next year they're gonna come out they're gonna explain themselves and i think they um really do understand that the best co course forward for them is an ipad like upgrade uh, sort of thing for the switch where it's like hey this is the right. 2023 switch or 2024 switch whenever it comes out and yeah. and you know it's it's improved in every way and you're gonna and but and for the most part it's still a switch Sure. Yeah. Uh, once again, sticking into Nintendo, Super Nintendo World will begin its first winter theme uh, on November 11th. I, I don't know. I just think this is super cute, so I just wanted to put it in here. I, uh, uh, I, I you know, Mar I like Mario and I like uh, winter time, so yeah. like, like Christmas time. So I'm like, it's too for I me. Could it's, go to this. Yes, I wish I could go to this so much. It's they got this. Uh, oh, I just lost you. I'm, uh, hang on, everybody. I lost Merit. Uh, Discord died on me. Let's see if it comes back. Let's see if it comes back. Uh, there we go. Sorry, da, uh, we're back. We're back. Sorry, Merit. Uh, Discord reset on me, but there you are. Oh, all right, we're, we're good now. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, I, they got Mario I think your and Luigi. Might be, uh, might be off. <laughs> yes, let me turn it back on for you. There we go. 
Um, yes, the, the Mario and Luigi as these little snowmen mm -hmm. is very, very cool, and everyone just looks so happy in the snow-covered uh, Princess Peach's castle and the, the stars on the tree. It's just, it, it's doing it for me. I don't know. That's Yeah, I'm a mark for this stuff. Are you a theme park person? I uh, I have decided I want to be. Um, me I, too. I, yes, I've, like recently yeah. I, I'm surrounded by people who are, and yeah. uh, it's rubbed off on me. I'm like, yeah, right. I'm, I want to just, because I, I could be when I was uh, younger and shittier, just a little bit cynical about that. Like where yeah. I'm like, I don't need to go to the themed restaurant. That's, uh, I'm an adult who just wants to order their good food from a, a renowned place that has a Michelin uh -huh. star. Of course, I never actually did any of that. And now I'm like, <laughs> going to the Rainbow Forest Cafe and be like, oh, that lion is kind of moving. That's great. And I'm like way happier. So yeah, that's where I'm at too. Is that what's happened to you recently? I don't know. What do you Yeah, I am. Um, so I, I, you know, I, I went to Disney World as a kid a couple of times. We would drive down and um, I, I got into watching Defunct Land videos uh, over the, yeah. you know, the last couple of months. And I was just like, oh, oh yeah, this is cool. This is cool stuff. I think part of it though, is that I just want to go to the theme parks of my childhood because like i don't really care like oh if i went to disney now it'd be like a lot of marvel stuff a lot mm -hmm. of harry potter stuff and like i don't really care about those things like just give me the back to the future ride but like the mm -hmm. super uh super nintendo world stuff i'm like okay yeah. all right yeah they're yeah, they're, yeah. they're really yeah sure. get me they're gonna expand it with donkey kong i think that'll be fun but yeah this just um this festive mario holiday stuff is is very cute uh, let's see if there's anything and uh, now those are the, the only um, i have here the u.s one oh, here is opening in like a year or two right that, that's right and i think yeah it's moving along really quickly uh the that's the uh, uh the, the one in california right now yes Studios, yes, so. yes not the florida one which is going to be even bigger but uh yes that's right so i'm like oh god kind of like i would like to make this happen um honestly i would like to just go to the one in japan uh yeah more than anything no, i think it'd be great all right, uh, let's uh, get back here. Naughty Dog has hired former uh, Fortnite veteran as its monetization designer for a new project. This comes from Eddie McCoo at GameSpot. Naughty Dog has hired Fortnite's former system designer to become the principal monetation, monetization designer on an upcoming project. Uh, Anders Howard, who designed the core of Fortnite's Battle Pass and its progression system, is now working on Naughty Dog on a new project believed to be a live service multiplayer title. Uh, Howard joined Naughty Dog in November 2022. It was revealed on LinkedIn. Uh, Howard did not say what he was working on, confirming only new adventures await. Howard left Epic Games in January 2022 after seven years with the company, moving to Ubisoft Stockholm, where he worked on a new IP and contributed to its economy design. Uh, he's joining Naughty Dog as the studio develops a, its first major multiplayer game, and that's first major standalone multiplayer game, obviously, uh, for kind of spinning, spinning off the Last of Us universe. This is just... Um, this is that right they're gonna they need to find like they're putting all this work yeah. into this um what was originally going to be a mode i think in last of us part two and then right. they decided to make it a standalone thing and they're putting all this effort in it it's been years now since that game came out and they're still working on this thing they've come out and talked a little bit about it and said it's going to be uh really live servicey and that's what i've heard that yeah. it's going to have um, technical components that enable them to swap things in and out on the fly so it's just going to feel like a super alive game and the reason you do that stuff is to get engagement. And the reason you do that stuff is so people spend money on the game. And you, yeah. I'm sure Naughty Dog has figured out a lot of the, a lot of those components on their own. Having someone come in and understand ways to get people to actually open up their wallet is, is important. And right. that's what's happening here, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, the answer is you put Rick from Rick and Morty in, in the game. That's right. <laughs> but um, honestly, I don't know. Like, you know, I, I play Fortnite on and off. And I feel like the Battle Pass situation has gotten... A lot better in that game yeah uh it used to be just like you would have to grind and grind and grind and grind uh but um yeah this is just i guess the reality of making a multiplayer game in the year of our lord uh 2022 right yep. it's just like you have to do this because the amount of work it's gonna take to like to build that that project out like you have to recoup it somehow and the way people do that now is by doing battle bouses mm -hmm. like so I, I mean, I'm playing, uh, I'm playing Marvel snap and it's, um, right, yeah. and I'm wondering how, um, uh, if the best practices or the way to approach a newly launched free to play game has changed. Cause this one is very sort of just treating us with kid gloves. They are um, yeah. like, listen, hey, lit man, you want to spend some money. <laughs> we have ways, but that's not why we're here. We're here to have fun. And yeah. that's what it feels like. And I'm like, oh, well, cool. I feel like I'm, I feel very welcomed here. And I don't yeah. like, listen, man, we don't have to think about money right now. That's, that's future Jeff's right. problem. <laughs> I, oh, great. Okay. 
And so I've just been, uh, I have spent some money, but it's like a limited amount. It's, uh, I mean, right. I was talking to Jan, he's Jan's like, I spent $23. I'm like, I spent the exact same $23, two battle mm -hmm. passes and the welcome uh, pack that was $3 with Captain yeah. America in it. And it's like, oh yeah, okay. I'm, but I haven't felt the need to go and just get on the whale train. I'm like, well, I'm like, okay, I gotta right. get on that treadmill. Um, and I wonder if, you know, as these new games come out, if they will lean in that direction or if it's going to be all go pretty quickly. Um, and that also seems difficult too, because, you know, I think Halo tried that and it didn't have enough yeah. content to support it. And right, yeah. that's, I mean, that's gotta be a challenge too. Cause it's not just, I mean, it's not just figuring out the economics and the systems and the uh, psychology of it. All that stuff is I'm sure difficult, but art generation is still s yeah. like one of the biggest hurdles for these companies. Right, and that's not going to get any yeah. easier. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's wild that this has sort of become like a whole specialty too within design careers mm -hmm. of just like monetization or like reward stuff. Um, it's yeah. I mean like just having to think about like all these things that go into this like how to get people to like, and it's, you know, it's everyone finds a different line, right. Of what is exploitative right. and what is okay. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I was talking to Paul Tassi about this the other day because he's playing snap as well. And I started playing uh, magic, the gathering arena mm -hmm. for some reason. Uh, I was like, Oh, everyone's <laughs> playing a new card game. Let me just play the old one. <laughs> um, that's much more exploitative. And um, yeah, they were like, Oh, when the new thing comes out, if you, whenever you uh, open a pack that you've bought, it adds one to a counter that will give you a gold pack. And I'm like, this is just straight up, like they've gamified buying things mm -hmm. on this battle pass. So it's, I don't know. I'll be interested to see what this looks like yep. when it comes out. And it's, it, you know, it all feels a bit um, like we are at a disadvantage because they are employing these people who have studied how yeah. to exploit us for, for years and years. Right. And it's like, it, it's like, oh, you know, these people just out of college, it's like, no, the guy that was doing that at Valve went on to become like, the chief financial minister of Greece during, like, during their whole like financial <laughs> collapse. And it's like, oh, oh my God, like, that's like, that's like serious shit. I'm like, I remember trying to interview yeah. him and then like, they're like, no, he's leaving to go save Greece. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> All right. So uh, yeah, it's like, that's the level of, of, well, you know, what we're up against. But um, also I think as a collective gamers could be pretty, pretty loud and they, and they kind of, I mean, at least for the, the kinds of games that we're interested in here a lot, I mean, on yeah. mobile side, it's very, it's different. It's, yeah. it's different. Um, but you know, we, we get loud about it and it seems like uh, the companies are like trying to find a way to be more friendly about it. And obviously that's also part of the exploitation strategy. Obviously right. it is, but sure. Yeah. Uh, in the meantime, I'm really enjoying the game. So, um, I just lost my doc. Let me scroll back down here. All right. Uh, Twitter's paid verification leads to fake accounts for game companies, including Nintendo and valve. Uh, this comes from Tom Ivan at VGC high profile individuals and companies, including the likes of Nintendo and valve are being impersonated on Twitter following the launch of the services, new paid verification system. I feel like you could have wrote the story a week ago <laughs> and you would have got it exactly yeah. right like you could have just said yeah. exactly what was going to happen because everyone right. knew what was going to happen uh prior prior to elon musk's 44 billion dollar acquisition of the platform twitter independently independently verified and awarded certain accounts indicated by a blue check mark based on them uh meeting certain requirements i don't like the term uh, awarded because it's, right. it's more like a cursed <laughs> you've been cursed yeah. this blue yeah, check you've mark. been marked you've been marked yeah. exactly uh, these accounts were deemed to be active, notable, and authentic ones of public interest, but there's now another way to, for anyone to get verified, which has resulted in com and co potentially harmful consequences. A fake but verified Nintendo of America account recently popped up advertising an unannounced Super Mario Galaxy game. It also published an image of Nintendo's mascot Mario giving the middle finger. Um, a verified Valve account was also used to announce Ricochet Neon Prime, which was billed as the next competitive platform from the company behind the Half-Life series and leading online digital games, uh, game store Steam. Uh, when it turned out to be fake, it never nevertheless uh, spawned its own thread on popular gaming forum uh, Reset Era before users identified it as a ruse and locked it. Uh, I mean, of course, this is this is what's happening. Like, of course, like this is but this is what all these companies were saying. Hey, w w we don't want to be on this like advertising on this platform because right. uh, it's going to be very easy for, you know, misinformation and, and hate speech and all kinds of things to rise to the top. Um, give us some indication that you're doing anything about that. And instead, the indication is it's going to be as bad as everyone thought. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, I feel bad for the state of public discourse and for, yeah. you know, truth and everything but this is tremendous posting yes you know <laughs> absolutely like i mean I, I i mean i would expect no less as soon as this went live it was sort of the obligation of of, of shit posters out there to show the ways immediately how it could be exploited because 
it, it's going to be exploited. And, you know, this is um, Mario giving us the middle finger is is wonderful and important. But it's like uh, there's an, other accounts saying, hey, this is, a, you know, an official Twitter account and here's a link and if you give us a link we're going to give you a, a free twitter verification and we're going to steal all your crypto and it's like, of course yeah people spent eight dollars that's a good investment to steal hundreds or thousands of dollars of yeah. people's digital currencies and so like, okay well i mean first of all you know a bunch of suckers getting suckered once again big surprise but uh it's it this makes it that much easier and i'm sure that that grift is going to continue to work until the stuff changes uh We'll, we'll see. Um, we just sort of continue to have to like live at the whim of the worst people. Um, yeah. But it really is just the worst people. And it is. I, mean, I, know, I know we opened the show with it, but he's just so goddamn stupid. It is <laughs> so frustrating to be like, to, to think that you could go and explain to him, uh, oh, hey, this is why it wouldn't work. I mean, there are people inside of Twitter doing that for sure. They've now all resigned or they are just going to keep their mouth shut and keep cashing checks. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm going to keep using Twitter, but I, I am going to, I, I'm already getting way more bummed about it. That studio Ghibli star Wars thing got announced today and I saw it a couple times and I just assumed, Oh, that is, that's a fake. It's just, you know, the two logos back to back. Uh, very funny. Another thing kind of explain it. And no, it was real. And I'm like, Oh, that's where I'm at right now. We're already yeah. 100% believing nothing is real. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. Where, where, where are you at with all this stuff? It's just April fool's day. Like forever. Yeah, constantly. Now. Right. And yeah. it's miserable right um yeah i kind of wish i could um give them back my check mark because i yeah. they let me keep it for some reason um and it, it will if you go to someone's profile now if you click on it it'll yes. tell you this user's verified because we think they're yeah you have to click on the check special. check mark something i've never done before right this. Never no, even no one has ever me. done that yeah it's like oh this user's verified because we think they're just a special little poster and then uh oh this user's verified because they have eight bucks uh, so it's like, I don't want it anymore. Cause I don't want people to think that I gave them money for mm -hmm. this. Like it's, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, I don't need it's, it. It's tainted. It, 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 yeah. it gets me nothing. Uh, it, it only, it, it was always so weird for the longest time. Like the, uh, yeah. I mean, I, this, I get blue check marks on Twitter. Like the, the, the joke right. there. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's a, it is a certain, uh, you know, a joke kind of personality that you can really indicate, right. Or like, or recognize really quickly. I get that, but it's, um, you know, for the most part, it was just this thing that happened without me having any say in it because I worked as a journalist for a website that had, a, you know, that said, hey, Twitter, all our journalists need to be verified. And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. fine. And then after that, it was like, well, you, you know, how did you get that? And I'm like, I don't know, and I don't really care. Yeah. And you shouldn't, you shouldn't care either because it doesn't right. mean anything. Um, and now here we are, and it's uh, he thinks it's this really important thing. And, you know, I think he's being proven right in the very, very, very immediate term. Uh, there's a bunch of people I see paying for it and uh, whatever, do with your money, how, whatever you want. But it's um, it's just kind of destroying the whole value of the thing in the process. And of, of course it is, whatever. I, we don't have to talk about Twitter anymore. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> uh, new compression feature from Microsoft promises lightning fast load times. This comes from uh, Grace Benfell at GameSpot. Microsoft released Direct Storage 1.1 this week, and, and its biggest feature is GPU decompression, decompression for Windows. Uh, the new feature promises to improve load times on PC. Here's how it works. When you download a game, all the assets have been compressed for ready or, uh, to make them ready for distribution. When you launch the game, the assets get decompressed for presentation during play. This could take time as the decompression goes from storage to the central processing unit to the graphics card. Uh, as Casey Hoff, a senior programmer at Microsoft, explained, typically decompression work is done on the CPU because compression formats have historically been optimized for CPUs only. The new update lets developers shift that work to the GPU, which is much more efficient at performing repeatable tasks in parallel. In effect, this will speed up load times if developers implement changes with meta commands. Um, I, to me, this is um, important because there is this Xbox Series S out there, and this is not a, the exact feature that they're talking about here, but the hope is, is that as um, time goes on and the RAM, the limited RAM in the Xbox Series S that's maybe holding back development, well, maybe that won't be such a problem if they can use direct storage to load da load data from, you know, cold storage into uh, and, and into RAM really quickly because they're just ripping it with the GPU and decompressing it super fast. And it's like, well, it doesn't, okay, we can get things in and out of RAM way faster now than we could before because of all this direct storage stuff. That's the hope. And it sounds like they're slowly making progress there. Uh, you know, this here just it shouldn't help with load times overall. And that's, that's great. But load times have gotten pretty good recently. Uh, I, like, 
where where are you at with it in, in terms of like the quality of life and actually playing games and load times and stuff like that? You know, we're we're pretty well off these days, right? Yeah, I mean, I think so. I I'll be honest, I haven't um, hopped on the um, the next gen mm -hmm. train yet, just because I've had a gaming PC since right. But you you're already getting the benefits SSDs and so stuff, I, yeah. Yeah, so I'm already kind of set. Yeah. Um, and you know, I've looked at the PS5, but it, I'm still not sort of like there yet mm -hmm. in terms of library. Um, but is the Series S, like, do you, have you heard or have you seen it kind of like starting to struggle with, with some stuff? There was, it, there's it been, okay so far? there's been some hubbub from some people saying that that's, that's holding back the entire generation. And of course that's not really happening yet because of, um, uh, games are still being supported in the last gen consoles and, right, and supporting yeah. really old GPUs on, on, on PC. Uh, but I think the, the, the concern now is that when developers are setting up the scope for games to come over the next three to five years, they're looking around like, well, we are just going to be on Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 5 and PC, and we'll set our PC minimum rec you know, requirements up pretty high. So the thing that will be the limiting factor will be the Xbox Series S. And uh, right. obviously, there's always going to be a limiting factor. Uh, and, so, and usually it's going to be memory on something. And here it's just, it happens to be the amount of memory on the Xbox Series S. But... I think people are are they're looking at it and they're thinking about it in the terms of the way you know loading things into RAM uh, has worked in the past, where you are decompressing with the CPU. If direct storage, if developers begin developing with direct storage in mind, that could change pretty quickly. The uh, the way the Xbox Series X and S are set up, it is basically like having their SSDs directly attached to the GPU. Something that will probably happen on PC here pretty soon, where right. next gen the fifty nineties are probably going to have an SSD card slot on them. You're going to be able to plug an SSD directly into that, and it's just going to rip it off there. I mean, obviously, it's, you know, direct storage enables it to pick it up from your SSD on your motherboard really quickly, but it's like they're going to get even faster when they're just attached. The Xbox Series X and S and PlayStation 5, for that matter, already pretty much work that way. Um, so it's going to be... Uh, it, it should be very fast, ne nearly as fast as like a... Um, last generation ram module was they, right. these, things, these things use like uh, gdr r6 which is very very fast but it's you know if you get up to gdr r5 memory with like picking up uh information off of your uh, ssd well that kind of changes things and you should be able to get everything into ram really fast it's just developers right. are not developing games with that stuff in mind right now and sure. so it's like yeah. we just kind of get got to get there and they got to figure it out and once they do i i just i really think there's going to be a lot of pretty big leaps this generation eventually and all that stuff will come from the cpu and and the, the you know much more powerful gpu and the memory won't be such a limiting factor right right uh prince of persia remake is still in the works uh that that has uh, been the, the you know the confirmation from a couple of stories uh in a few places but interestingly the game that was originally supposed to come out as prince of persia remake that got canned was finished and uploaded to the PlayStation servers, servers before getting rebooted. Uh, so pre-orders have been canceled because the game is indefinitely delayed, but it is still in the works. Um, oh. In the meantime, Lance McDonald, who is uh, you know, one of the guys that like does the, uh, he did like the 60 frames per second hack for uh, Bloodborne on PlayStation. Right. Uh, right. He said, uh, this was actually finished. It went gold, went through Sony certification. It was uploaded to the PlayStation Network servers where some, where some clever people were able to preserve it and even decrypt it using their pre-order encryption keys. I wonder what the hell happened. I, I mean, I think what happened is they probably um, got some uh, consultant, you know, uh, mock reviews back that said this is going to yeah. be panned really hard and you shouldn't. It's going to taint Prince of Persia if you don't put it out. Is that your right. read on it? I mean, yeah. I mean, at that point, like, what else could it possibly mm -hmm. have been? Right. Like, yes. That has to. But it, it is kind of wild that like something can get that far and then have that happen. Um, yes, absolutely. And, the, and then just be pulled. Like, that's that's wild. Yeah. I mean, um some people are pointing out like, you know, that's become a little bit more common recently because if you yeah. can to something, you could get a tax write off on it. I, I mean, yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's how it works. I guess the, these companies pay taxes all over the world. And I'm, sure there's, I'm yeah. sure there's a million reasons to do it. Right. Yeah. Just write it off as a loss, I guess. Uh, but also, you know, the Prince of Persia is something that probably could come back and they could do um, more with that franchise, but you need to not uh, taint it permanently with a, a bad release, yeah. which is very easy to do these days. We've seen I, that yeah, a couple of times. Absolutely. I could very, I, I can imagine a world in which this came out and it was just so underwhelming and mediocre. Yes. Um, and yeah. I mean, and we this has happened in recent memory of like a series that has sort of been rebooted or come I mean, back. War, Warcraft and... 3 Reforged, right? Uh, that's like, sure. that was like so bad that now people aren't even really asking for Warcraft anymore. 
Uh, right. They they like you know that was happening before that, and they're like, oh god, okay, we asked for it. This is what they give us. It is really depressing to even go in and try to play, and it's yeah. even depressing to think about. So I'm just kind of over it right now, and it's yeah. uh, you know it's very easy to see that happening here. I. I love Prince of Persia Sands of Time. I think Prince of Persia would be a great franchise to sort of have a little bit of a resurgence just to change things up from the, you know, yeah. the endless parade of Assassin's Creed's. Yeah. Uh, so I'm kind of you know thankful that they're doing this, but it is strange. Like it gets all the way to that point before they pull the plug on it. Well, it could have been a new, it could have been a, another Saints Row. So yeah. maybe it's good that they did. <laughs> right. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Let's see. Uh, November's PlayStation Plus game catalog and classic titles have been announced. I just kind of, I I'm always want to do like a check-in on PlayStation Plus every once in a while. Now, we knew they uh, dropped about 2 million subscribers uh, uh, after rebooting everything uh, with the PlayStation Plus Essentials Extra and Premium. I'm never going to be able to remember that. Uh, but the, the uh, Extra and Premium are getting a, a pretty good list of modern games, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5 games added to its library. Um, that includes Skyrim Special Edition, Rainbow Six Siege, a whole bunch of Kingdom Hearts games, unfortunately, uh, some Tom Clancy games, and Earth Defense Force and Ani Chambra, Chambara Origin stuff, so you can get your uh, bikini sword uh, zombie action on. Um, meanwhile, PlayStation Plus Premium Classic Games, and of course the PlayStation Premium uh, tier is the one that's like $18 a month or $120 a year, something like that. And it's the one that has the classic games as like, oh, that's its big feature. Uh, it's getting a bunch of Ratchet and Clank games. So uh, Ratchet and Clank for PS3, Ratchet and Clank 2 going Commando PS3, uh, Up Your Arsenal, Dr uh, Deadlocked. These are all PS3 games. Tools of Destruction. Uh, okay, cool. I like Ratchet and Clank. That's a lot of Ratchet and Clank. These are all going to be streaming games. Where are the PS1 and PS2 and PSP <sighs> and Vita games? What is right. going on? What is wrong with premium? What is wrong with Sony? Why is it like this? I I don't get it. This it feels like a Nintendo move of just like yeah, here's like a few classic yeah. games. It's like you have this amazing huge like library back catalog that has been available on like prior consoles in various ways. Like what? Why isn't it here? I'm I'm starting to like get the vibe from them that um. We, we did see those numbers go down after they, after they reintroduced PlayStation Plus as this three-tier system. And maybe it was like, hey, we, we did it, and people didn't react positively. Stop investing in it. I, I mean, is that possible already? God, I mean, maybe. It's just like... <laughs> it's, it's like, well, that's going to be a, sort of a, a self-limiting kind of cycle then. Like, yeah. you're not investing in this thing that people didn't like, so the, other people aren't going to then like it. Like... I guess I see the the strategy of like cutting and running maybe or just, you know, minimizing your investment. But like, God, that yeah, this is not like inspiring me to get a PS5 right now. Um, like, you know, what one reason I would want to get a Sony console would be for all of the, the back catalog. Yeah, the stuff. legacy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's just like so much there. And um, it's kind of a bummer that this is just it is just kind of a wet nothing yes you know? it, and it really yeah because it's i was pretty excited for this so it wasn't like you know i was kind of like wait and see and we've a lot of people i think did exactly that or people did hop on and they've canceled I and mean, people in chat are saying how they've canceled premium i i mean obviously extra does seem like a pretty good value this is mm -hmm. this is for me this is specifically about premium uh right. and, and extra looks pretty good that's a pretty good list of games if you are someone who has played a lot of games hasn't played everything you know, just suddenly get getting Skyrim Special Edition. Maybe you played Skyrim when it first came out, and now here's this one right. that's been updated in all these ways. And what remains of Edith Finch and Chorus, a, re a relatively recent game, The Division yeah. Two. Yeah, extra seems like a pretty good deal at uh, what is I think fifteen dollars per month. Uh, yeah, that sounds fine to me. But the, these classic games, premium, just seems like a real nothing. Uh, all right. Well, let's end here with the Tactic Ogres or Tactics Ogre Reborn review roundup. Uh, it has an 86 on Metacritic. Um, that's pretty good. This is a, uh, the second Square Enix RPG yeah. to come out in the last week. We just got Harvestella. Now, right. this this did much better than Harvestella, at least in terms of reviews. Uh, and it got a 4.5 from Twifinite, uh, where which said. Tactics Ogre Reborn is an odd creature in the realm of remasters. Not only is it the fourth release of the Tactics Ogre title in some way, shape, or form, 
but it's also one which uh, has seen a, sub sub a substantial number of tweaks meant to make it easier and more accessible. As such, fans of the series wouldn't be blamed for wondering whether it's another re-release or a tried and true or of a tried and true title or a substantial remaster which overhauls the elements that the game is so beloved for. Well, after sinking dozens of hours into the game, I can safely say that it falls into neither of these camps. Instead, Tactics Ogre Reborn is an exemplary remaster modernizing the, the game in the best ways possible so that the original title's best aspects are put on full display. Uh, Shaq News gave it an 8 out of 10. Uh, Tactics Ogre Reborn is a treasure uh, of both classical tactical RPG design and modern sensibilities. And Push Square also gave it an 8 out of 10. The strategy RPG genre owes a lot to the Tactics Ogre franchise, which is filled with lesser titles trying to recreate even a fraction of its winning formula. The experience that lies at the heart of Tactics, Tactics Ogre Reborn has stood the test of time admirably, and thanks to the swath of intelligent tweaks and quality of life improvements introduced, uh, you will likely like what is remained here. Um, this is, um, I think, really nice that this game came out and is uh, solid. It's kind of, for one of these kinds of remasters, where it's not a remake, it is tweaking and improving and up what is already there. I think a, a good solid 8 out of 10 review scores is kind of really really good right yeah no that's that's pretty good i mean have you ever played um let us cling together like no the, the and i'm no, i'm curious i'm very curious about this yes yeah i played march the black queen a little bit um but yeah this is a series i don't actually know that much about and I'm, i am kind of curious about um so i mean if this one does well maybe some of the other games will will get the same treatment like yeah the, the nintendo 64 uh one I think is pretty highly regarded. Yes. And um, did you did you play the Live Alive when it came out earlier this I year? I played the demo and really enjoyed it and have been meaning to go back. Yeah, but it's yeah. great. Yes, yeah. I, I was, I, and, says, you know, yeah. it's like, it's kind of really nice to see Square doing this kind of thing. Um, I could take or leave games like Harvestella, like these sort of newer, or like the, um, what's what do people call them? Like Serif, uh, underline Serif games, where it's just like Project Triangle or whatever, like they all have the same right. title treatment. Yes. <laughs> um, but, but bringing back some of these older games and sort of modernizing them and making them a little more like playable or customizable. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm, I'm really down for it. Square has like an enormous catalog. Like they've absorbed so many companies over the last, you know, 20 years. Like yes. this tactics over was originally by quest. Um, right. and I think square gobbled them up like 20 years ago. So mm -hmm. Yep, right, right around the time of the uh, when the like right after the, the N64 games were coming out and stuff like yeah, that next generation yeah, they got them years after yeah. yes so uh, yeah I'm 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 curious I'm glad that this game exists and people are gonna get a chance to go back people were asking for this uh, and it and it happened and it's it seems to have delivered and you wondered like okay can they jump off from here and do more tactics ogre we'll we'll see I mean Square Enix has done a lot of strategy RPGs recently they're putting out you know just across all their genres something like 12 or 13 games over this the last three, four or five months. Uh, it's, it's a lot. So They're all uh, about farming. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, exactly. Yes, exactly. So, you know, if we, if we have to, I'll take a new tactics ogre about farming. Fine. We'll make it happen. Um, I'm, yeah, I think I probably will at least I'll, I'll, I'll acquire this, give it a look. Very busy time of year though. We'll see. Uh, I have the polls up. Let's see here. Let me get to this. Uh, actually did I, there it is. Let's go over here to, are you going to check out Halo Infinite again now that it has Forge and Campaign Co-op? And 55.6% said yes, 44.4% said no. Uh, I am I think I'm ready to go back. I'm just kind of waiting for like the crew I always play with to be like, hey, we're, we're going back. I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah let's, let's do it. But I'm, I personally, I am, I'm ready. I really like Halo Infinite, really enjoy playing it. Have never been much of a Halo person before. I think they really nailed the game feel, and it's uh, fun to hop in with friends. And it's kind of all I really need from Halo. Um, yeah. But I'm like, okay, now I can do that in campaign co-op and that you know cool physics sandbox. Let's. I would like to do that. That sounds great. Uh, I don't know. How about you? Yeah. Um, so I played Infinite for about two weeks. I I never I didn't do the campaign. I think I played it because the multiplayer came out first, right? Yes, that's right. The, yeah. No, that's right. Um, so I played a bunch of the multiplayer. The battle pass kind of like just didn't, it felt pretty bad to me. Mm -hmm. um, it was one of those cases where adding a battle pass to something was like, all right, this has just made me feel like I'm doing work when mm -hmm. I'm playing this. Um, but yeah, I was, you know, I was, the last time I was big into Halo was Halo 2. So that's sort of like how long ago that was for me. But um, the co-op campaign was always like a really big highlight of it. So like now that it's finally there, maybe I will play through it um, with some friends. But like, God, that's just 
it's so sad just the way they fumbled the bag on that mm -hmm. i mean i was really enjoying it and uh and and was like i said really like the game feel and even as people were starting to be like i i'm there's nothing here there's nothing new here i'm like ah, i'm i'm fine yeah. i'm not playing enough to uh really make right. that a problem and i wasn't gonna start going after the uh, the battle pass so yeah it's like i wasn't r g grinding myself into the ground like i know a lot of people did uh yeah. Uh, but then even after a while, even after, you know, uh, uh, finding a lot of reasons to keep enjoying it and, and ignoring a lot of the complaints, it got to me eventually. And I'm like, you know what? No, this is a bummer. This is uh, kind of a uh, just a, it's in a sad state. And when you go to try to play it, you try to convince someone else to play it. It's like seeing them be like, oh, man, I don't want to go back to the thing. It, it gets to you. So I'm like, yeah, they, they need something new. I don't know if this is enough for most people, but I'm like at least campaign co-op and I'll, I'll wait and see if the Forge stuff really starts popping off. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, I've got a, uh, a new poll. Let's see. Did I, I think, did I come up with one? Let's see here. Um, yeah, let's go for this. Let's see. Do you think the next switch will be fully backward compatible? I, I think I would, I would expect well, most people would just say yes to this, but I wonder if people are still skeptical. Game this mornings. Ooh, that's not how you spell mornings. All right, let's say yes and no. In the meantime, Merritt, where can people find you? Tell people where they can uh, get more of you. Yeah, um, I am at Merritt K on Twitter. Um, I'm also trying to build up my Instagram and YouTube, which I probably should have done a long time ago. <laughs> uh, and now that the boat is kind of like, I don't know if it's sinking yet, but it's definitely in, in troubled waters. Um, I'm Merritt K9 on Instagram because Merritt K was taken. And um, I think YouTube just add, finally added handles. So I think I am. Yes, they did. Very, yeah. very K on YouTube as well. And I'm trying to post more stuff on there. Oh, and I'm also on Twitch. I'm streaming Sekiro right now for the oh, first fun. time. Yeah, I was sort of doing a whole thing of going through all of the Dark Souls games. And then I finally ran out of those. And uh, everyone wanted to see me play Sekiro. So it, you know, it was a rough first couple of, of streams because I was like, hmm, it's really wish I was playing Dark Souls. Um, but I think I've, I've turned a band. I beat Juzo the Drunkard last night. So, um, or, uh, on Tuesday. So yeah, I'm actually streaming, uh, tonight. Uh, I do Tuesdays and Thursdays at 530, uh, Eastern. And then, you know, I've been trying some other stuff too. I streamed some magic arena drafting last weekend. Um, God help me, <laughs> <laughs> please help. But, uh, yeah. And yeah, thanks again with the book, uh, Please DM me on Twitter if you have uh, if you have uh, photos or stories of land parties. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, in that um, use of the drunkard, that's the the memory, right? You can keep poking around. You'll yep. find some other stuff. Mm -hmm. There's a there's another thing. Don't worry about that yet. There's I'm a... uh, I'm stuck on. I've been fighting Madam Butterfly yes. or not Lady Butterfly long enough that the game was like, hey. Um, there might be easier stuff if you go somewhere else. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, and then just there's a suggestion. There's an even a uh, tougher uh, freak in that oh, okay. area that's hidden cool. and it's optional. Yeah, just come back to that later. Just come back to that later. Okay. That'll be that'll yep. be the way to do that. Uh, on uh, Giant Bomb today, we have a voicemail dump truck. Uh, definitely tune in for that. Uh, I guess I'm going to be playing Bubsy. Uh, Grubsy 3D is oh, continuing no. as part of Blight Club. We'll be there. I, I uh, was um, about to do uh, one of my other podcasts the other night. And so I got, I sat down here and I got on, I opened up Twitch and I saw Dan was streaming. And I opened it up and he's just immediately like, is Grub here? I hope he's not here. Cause I'm going to do on for Blight club on Thursday. I'm going to do it. And I'm like, Dan, I'm here. Don't, don't spoil it. But he, apparently he's got some nightmare planned for me already. Oh, so I don't have to do that. Have you, have, have you, you ever uh... played Bubsy 3D? Have you ever played this? Oh God, no, no. Please, please don't, please don't oh, ever God, do it. No. Don't ever um, do it. Have you ever played Bubsy visits the James Terrell retrospective? I, as getting, getting ready to this, I'm ready for this. Okay, I played good, it again. Yeah. I've played it in the past. Mm -hmm. It is, that's really good. It's a really good time. Yeah. It's, um, th th it's been preserved because it was like originally running in like some form of uh, unsupported software. I don't know if it's Flash or whatever. Yeah, HTML5 or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah but it's like, they're like, hey, we're going to preserve this. And it's like to, uh, and so you have to like kind of download this little client for mm -hmm. it. Um, and you get it running and when it finishes, it's just like, okay, uh, to preserve what it was like originally, uh, there is no way to like restart it or to do anything. You mm -hmm. just have to close the entire thing. So we're going to keep that. I'm like, oh, fun. So yeah, I played through that. That's still really, really good. That's just bubsy 3d.com everybody. I think you just go there mm -hmm. and play that right now. All right. Uh, uh, Merritt, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate yeah, thanks it. Thanks for having me back on. This is always so much fun. Absolutely. Uh, one time, uh, one more time, just go to your Twitter and you can find the link for the book. 
Uh, yeah, at Mary Kay, it's my pinned tweet. The link for the book is right there. Um, I'm Again, I'm very excited. Thanks again for telling us about it. Uh, all right, everybody. Uh, uh, thank you. You're the best audience in gaming. I really appreciate it. Until next time, have a good one. Take care of yourself and goodbye. <laughs>